Hello everyone, this is Jerome Waddle, and today I'm reading uh, Rilke's Unicorn Poems. Rilke wrote several poems about the unicorn. He was inspired by the six unicorn tapestries exhibited at a Paris museum. A French nobleman, Jean de la Viste, at the end of the 15th century, commissioned six unicorn tapestries. They are now at the Cluny Museum in Paris. They have inspired many writers, poets, and artists. Rilke wrote about all six of the tapestries in his only novel called The Notebooks of Malte Doritz Brig, and was written whilst Rilke lived in Paris and was published in 1910. The novel is a semi-autobiographical and is written as an expressionist style. The book was first issued in English under the title, Journal of My Other Self. The first five tapestries are said to represent the five senses, smell, touch, taste, hearing, and sight. And the sixth tapestry represents the soul's desire. The readings. The sense of smell. She is wearing a crown, a small round wreath of flowers. Thoughtfully, she chooses the color of the next carnation in the shallow dish held out to her by the maidservant while threading in the previous one. Behind her on a bench, there is a basket of roses that a monkey has found, but it is of no use this time. It's carnations she needs. The lion has no part here, but on the right, the unicorn understands. Sense of touch. What has happened? Why does the little rabbit leap about at the bottom? Why can we immediately see that he is leaping? All is so disquieted. The lion has nothing to do. She herself is holding the banner, or is she holding on to it? With her other hand, she touches the horn of the unicorn. Sense of taste. She's feeding a falcon. See her magnificent garment? The bird is perched on her gloved hand and is moving. She's watching it while putting her hand into a cup. On the right, at the bottom, sitting on her train, is a little silky-haired dog raising its head and hoping there will be something for him. And can you see a low rose-covered trellis? closes off the island at the back. Sense of hearing. Shouldn't there be music in this stillness? Or was it not already there, restrained? Her heavy adornments make no sound as she progresses. How slowly do you see, to the portable organ and standing plays. She has never been so beautiful. The lion, disgruntled, unwillingly endures the sounds, biting back its howl. But the unicorn is beautiful as if caught in the rolling waves of music. sense of sight. 
the lion turns, almost threatening nobody is permitted to approach. She extends her other arm towards the unicorn, and the animal rears up, flattered, and leans on her lap. It is a mirror she is holding. Do you see? She is showing the unicorn its reflection. Rilke also wrote a sonnet in his Sonnets to Orpheus II, number four in 1922, that also seems to reflect the mirror motif in this picture. It's called The Animal That Never Was. This is the animal that never was. They didn't know and loved him anyway, his bearing, his neck, the way he moved, the light in his quiet eyes. True, he didn't exist, but because they loved him, he became a real animal. They made a space for him, and in that clear, uncluttered space, he lifted his head and hardly needed to exist. They fed him, not with grain, but ever with the chance that he could be, and that so strengthened him, that from within he drew a horn. All white he drew near to a virgin and found himself in a silver mirror and in her. The Sixth Tapestry, My Soul's Desire. A tent has been erected, blue damask, finished with gold. The animals open it and she advances, simply in her princely garment. For what are those pearls by her side? The maid servant has opened a small casket and the lady now takes from it a chain, a marvelous heavy piece of jewelry, which has always been locked away. And have you read the description at the top of the tent? You can see it says, Amon Sul Diza. And finally, here's a different unicorn poem that Rilke wrote with a religious thing. The unicorn. The saintly hermit, midway through his prayers, stopped suddenly and raised his eyes to witness the unbelievable. For there before him stood the legendary creature startling white that had approached soundlessly pleading with his eyes. The legs so delicately shaped balanced a body wrought of the finest ivory. And as he moved, his coat shone like reflected moonlight. High on his forehead rose the magic horn, the sign of his uniqueness a tower held upright by his alert, yet gentle, timid gait. The mouth of softest tints of rose and gray, when opened slightly, revealed his gleaming teeth whiter than snow. The nostrils quivered faintly. He sought to quench his thirst, to rest and find repose. His eyes looked far beyond the saint's enclosure, reflecting vistas and events long vanished and closed the circle of this ancient mystic legend.
Rilke fully captures the beauty, untouchability, and gentleness of the unicorn as a symbol of Christ, as well as of romantic love, later mystical and magical. He embodies so much yearning 